welcome to LN space where sigma dx over dt applies when t equals 1 equals 0. Where energy is infinite limitless in flux yet remains the same trans-dimensional constant and abundant. We summarize this as real, behold, the light. Hello everybody, this is Alan, and this is my 2012 Ural uh, 750 Patrol. In 2012, so I am told by a um, California Ural dealer, uh, they put for one or two years um, a smog control uh, device on these machines. Uh, why you would want smog control, I don't know, but it's just nitpicky bureaucrats, I'm sure. And what it did for the machine was, well, by 2014, all of them had been taken off these machines. I found this machine, it was advertised at a dealer. The owner had bought it and put uh, about 112 kilometers on it and then just laid it up. <clears throat> so... I came along in uh, 2018 and I purchased the machine and uh, there it was running and everything but as soon as it hit about 5,000 kilometers guess what it won't it won't uh, run anymore it won't run because you turn the key and the starter switch uh, does nothing and there's no spark at the points because there is a extra kill switch on this machine and it's in the air cleaner itself so what happens here is I will demonstrate okay ignition on lights are nice and bright come over here nothing now what you can hear is the a lower solenoid uh, fl uh, flapper valve okay that's all working um, but this thing up here that's got electrical connections to it okay uh, it has some sort of kill switch thing inside it and it's gone wrong and now the machine won't work and so if you have one of these machines let's go over here and and look at the telltale of what the uh, smog control stuff is. It's that unit there, a uh, evaporation canister that goes down to the carburetors there, and uh, then it has pipes on the end there. Okay, these pipes here they go back into here and back to that bronze brass valve thing. And then there are electrical connectors and everything. It's basically a big piece of poo. Okay? And so, in order to get my bike to run, I've got to take all this garbage off of here. And thank you, California, for uh, your, your real sensible ideas on motorcycles. I remember a few years back where you wanted to put in legislation about seat belts on motorcycles. Uh, you guys are a bunch of nitwits. Anyways, so in the next few minutes I'm going to be disassembling all of this and taking it all off and I'll show you uh, what's on there in case you have one of these machines. And uh, I've been advised by URL, get this stuff off the machine because it's just junk. Okay, so here we are. And uh, the airbox has been removed. And unlike the uh, standard airbox, which you can see them do on their instructional video from Irbit of how to take it out this side, this unit with massive struggle has to come out this side. And here it is. This is the solenoid unit on the bottom. And it controls like a flapper valve and there's the uh, the air intake and so when this switch is on it basically clears the air intake 
the air intake so that air can go in to the box. It has a uh, ground wire and a tiny uh, wire here and uh, I think the reason for the tiny wire is that it ac acts as a resistive wire because when it goes up onto the loom it can when it goes up onto the loom it connects onto a heavier wire so this must be a resistive wire uh, so as to change the voltage perhaps going into this unit here um, this is the the other unit and it has uh, one connection right here okay and that goes onto the, onto uh, the sort of uh, the canister at the back and this tube goes to the canister at the front and inside here is the the kill switch or something so I guess perhaps what it is is it's this wire which is now clipped uh, is now out of the circuit and so I don't have a kill switch fighting the master switch and so I have to take this unit out and take uh, this unit out and I have to blank off the holes and then I'll have a normal air box then what I'm instructed to do is I come down here to the carburetor and where these connect onto the carburetor down here I'm to maintain this connection up to a, a T but the T goes to nowhere and uh, just put some tissue around the uh, the end of the T that goes to nowhere so as uh, uh, it can sort of breathe. Otherwise, what happens is the carbs stop stop working. Um, there's some sort of uh, a, a venturi or something in here, and unless unless uh, I guess I guess you could uh, pull the pipe off here, but then dirt and everything would get in the carb. So you have you have to uh, keep this pipe on here and run it up here to to the tea and put a bit of tissue over the end so that dirt doesn't go in but it can breathe and uh, that's that's the other modification that's uh, to the carbs that same union both sides and then the canister I have to uh, take that off on the other side so I'll go and do that now now here's the uh, the canister and that's removed and uh, this pipe here goes to the carburetor. That pipe there would go to the carburetor. And this T here and this T here. And basically what I've got to do is probably take out this short piece of pipe and this T and just run a long piece of pipe from here to the carburetor and put a piece of uh, tissue or something over here to stop dirt from going down in there. Okay and the other thing that has to be pointed out is that on the back of the tank here is a vent and this uh, this vent uh, is what you see up here when you take the cap off you see there's a little tube there well that vent goes down here and what I'm told to do with this is to put a long enough piece of pipe so longer than this down and uh, use a cable tie onto the frame so that it if there's any uh, vapors or anything they vent out and they just go away that way and I don't in case I when filling the tank I put a little bit of gas down there I don't get gas on my shoe or something like that okay so now all that is removed and now I'm gonna go and operate on the air box and now here is the Ural uh, 2012 patrol uh, with all the uh, California California uh, smog compliant pollution control stuff removed okay and as we come over here uh, you'll see 
we turn the ignition on and we hit the switch and she's running okay however it doesn't end there here's the offending garbage which was removed uh, from the air cleaner inside the air cleaner there was this uh, solenoid arrangement here that uh, moved up and down and basically when the bike was turned off this went up and it closed off the air cleaner so no air could get in and then when you turn the ignition on this was the clunk you heard of this being pulled down then uh, this is the sort of sensor switchy thing which uh, decided to uh, stop things from working and it's connected in through uh, two relays and the uh, relays are well I guess old Soviet technology relays which aren't so good and I'm told now the next thing I have to do is go in there and under the saddle and find those relays and replace them with modern relays um, but they sort of work they piggyback on each other and when something goes wrong one sets the other to off and bang you've got no ignition and this was the evaporation canister now I was of two minds as to whether I would leave this on and uh, uh, you know not have it connected but just have it sitting there and nobody would really know what it was but if I could get this apart here I thought wouldn't it be an interesting place you know to keep uh, money valuables things like that uh, if I'm if I'm going you know uh, I know down to Mexico or somewhere like that and I didn't want to get mugged and lose everything at least if it was in something like this on the bike people wouldn't know what it was and they wouldn't know to go and look in it so maybe that's an idea to put that back on at some point and have this as a cache a, a security cache if I can figure out how to make this lid go on in in some way that it's really secure and there's a, you know like a pill bottle you know a security device to allow me to undo it you know to access whatever I put inside there anyways I have to look at that in, in the future so there's that part of the operation now the other thing that uh, I discovered was that the carburetor jets for all of this to work were uh, totally uh, skewed off for instance the um, primer jet which should be a 45 is a 65 the main jet which should be a 125 presently is a 120 and the uh, pilot jet uh, which should be a 42 is a 40 so I've had to order all these jets and they'll be coming in soon so I'll have to change all the jets over in the carburetor to actually get her to run right because on a test run uh, she's got a lot of flat spots in the throttle response and uh, when I uh, put her in top gear I couldn't get her over to over 50 miles an hour and she actually slowed down to 45 so yeah the jets are are for this garbage okay and not for the normal running of a Ural okay so if you happen to have one of these 2012 machines with all this uh, garbage attached to it this video is for anyone out there who may still have a machine with this stuff on they should have all been taken off by 2014 but maybe there's one lingering in a in the back of a garage or something like that with low mileage low mileage like mine was and you're wondering what's going on with it and what to do about it well this video is a uh, shout out for you okay so anyways uh Happy motoring, happy Euroling, and maybe see you on the trail somewhere. Bye now.